about all he got to do was look at it. He looked at what's happening. I thank God for what Dave said about what's going on in Florida. I thank God for Florida, but we're living in Breslau. And I want to thank God for what he's about to do in Breslau. I believe that if there's a hungry heart, God will fill that hungry heart. If you hunger and thirst after righteousness, God will fill you. There's no reason why this place can't have an artesian well. He comes to hungry hearts. This guy is so close to something. He's on the edge. So close to his miracle. And yet the miracle never touched him. He was so close to divine angelic activity. But it never touched him. All he could do was look longingly. His life was always on the verge. And, and, and the challenging question comes from Jesus one day. Jesus came and challenged this man. I believe he wants to challenge you and I in the church. He challenges him to a very, the heart and the core with a question that I think that Jesus would ask every question, every person in this room who would listen to him. I dare say he asked you this question in all of your life, in all of your misery, in all of your troubles, in all of the sinfulness, all the sickness, all the afflictions, all the doubts, all the fears. I wouldn't be surprised when Jesus came again and asked you the question, don't you want to be free from this kind of thinking? Don't you want to be free from this polluted thinking? Don't you want God to come into the midst of this house and shake the whole place? Don't you want the supernatural realm to be an atmosphere, or do you want a religious atmosphere? Do you want the very presence of God? Do you want angelic beings to show up here in a supernatural way? Is there something within you that says, I'm hungry for another dimension? Jesus asked the question, do you want to continue? You've done it for 38 years and it didn't work. Do you want to keep going this way or do you want to change? He becomes very realistic with them. Sure, you're next to the miracle. You've been around miracles. You're right next to the pool. But do you want to change? You want to be free. You want to be made whole. You want to change your life. Don't you want something different than what you've had? Are you happy with yesterday? Are you happy with yesterday? Or do you want to press on into what the Holy Ghost wants to do in this hour? Amen. That's the question he's saying. See, what Jesus did, he came to challenge everybody. There are people today who are just in a sense on the sidelines. They're close to the activity of the Holy Ghost. They're very close to the miraculous power. They have watched it. They have witnessed it. They talk about it. And, and, and they have seen it year in and year out. They have seen God work. They've seen God move. They've seen his miracles. They've seen the power of his word in manifestation. And just on the verge, but they're so close, but they never jump in. Right, right. Jesus asked Oh, it moves me. I got some goosebumps. No. I'm talking about change. I'm talking about are you willing to change your attitude, your mind, your way of thinking? And when it comes to polluted thinking, say, go back to where you came from. I'm not going to listen to that anymore. Right. I'm going to put earmuffs on. Amen. I'm not going to talk that way. I'm not going to listen to that. Because, you know, there's life and death in the power of the tongue. You're going to be judged on every word that you speak. Why wouldn't you put on some spiritual earphones? 
and say, that's not from God. I'm not going to listen to it any longer. I've got a new destiny. I've got a new song. I've got a new dream. I'm about to see the Holy Ghost move in our lives. I want to challenge you with a word from the Lord, what he says. Jesus zeroes in on his life. And he sees the church waiting by the pool of God's blessing and power and grace. He sees exactly where we're at. He sees the negative attitude in lives that simply shrinks us back in fear and doubt and worry. And we hold back and we're afraid to take a quantum leap or a step into the unknown of his glorious spirit and his word. And, and you see what happens. All of a sudden we're afraid to abandon all those cares. We wallow in some of those things. And God says something here. He comes up with mercy and love. And then when you do, you'll find all of a sudden the glorious power of Almighty God there to sustain you, to strengthen you, and to hold you and to make your life different than it's ever been different before. There are all kinds of human excuses. What's wrong? Jesus challenges this man with this question. He begins to offer excuses. They come out of a lifetime, a lifetime of negative thinking. I think sometimes that the greatest enemy of the church our so-called spirit-filled people who make excuses for God, why God can't move in our church. We don't need to make excuses. We need to believe that God is bigger than any problem we face. Either God's on the throne or we're on the throne. We're not in control. God's in control, or he should be in control. And if we turn it over to God, then let God be God in our midst. Come on, church. Let me get in the sweet river of the Holy Ghost. The greatest thing the church needs in this hour is to cast all of our care to the wind and speak and plunge in faith of the mainstream of the moving of God's grace and power. The first excuse, he says, I have no man. I have no man. But his kind of attitude brings forth some excuses that sound so familiar. The first thing he said was, sir, I have no man. I haven't got anybody. I'm looking to somebody. Oh, really? I'm looking. Don't you dare look at a personality. The church has got to be built on Jesus Christ and nothing else. Come on, church. What we do is we compare personalities. That's not what God meant. Well, if you were in the church of Peter, you sure wouldn't think of him as the Apostle Paul, and you wouldn't think of Paul as Matthew. One would be talking about your taxes, the other one would be talking about fishing. One would be talking about how he studied the Levitical law, how he went from memory the first five books of the Torah, licked them up like honey as they used to do. So they all came with different things. So don't try and compare the personalities they will bring into this pulpit. They're here for a reason, for the perfecting, maturing, developing the saints, that you'll avail yourself to do what God's called you to do, that you'll go out and be an embarrassment to the devil. Hallelujah. 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 That's what it's about. I wish I had a man. Jesus said it's not built on a man. This church is built on a man, we've got a problem. Come on, talk to me. It can't be built upon a man. It's got to be built upon the rock, the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I wish somebody could transfer our longing, kind faith away from personalities and focus it literally on Jesus of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Second excuse. I'm just too weak. My God. I'm so weak I can't get up. 